Hi and welcome to another UQ 3D scanning tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at meshing, specifically meshing in Cloud Compare um, and MeshLab. So we're going to be taking a point cloud we've generated using our 3 P16 laser scanner and taking it through to a mesh. So first things first, you want to load up your point cloud file that you're going to mesh. This is the one that we've prepared earlier. We've basically exported this out of Cyclone as a PTX so to preserve point normals. Then we've cut down a lot of the irrelevant data, cut out all the trees, and then joined and subsampled the data. So it's been subsampled to eight millimeters. We have used that to reduce our point load from somewhere in the vicinity of around about 100 million down to about 11 million points. You can quite easily use um, point clouds with high densities. However, because of what we're doing, it just basically makes it much easier for us to manipulate. Um, and you do not need extremely high densities for your point clouds to mesh. So as I mentioned earlier in the scan, we do currently have the point normal data already inside. However, for the purposes of this exercise, I will show you how to get that point normal data. As often, that data can be lost if it's exported in the wrong file format or has gone through the wrong file format. Um, and it's something good to know. So to start, I'll show you how to check that you have point normals in your scan. So one of the easiest ways to do that is just to toggle on lighting effects as they were calculated using the point normals. Um, and that's very easy to toggle on and off. Another way of checking is converting the point normals to a scalar field. And then it's just done through your edit menu. So this scalar field enables you to have a quick look and analysis of your mesh normals. Um, and as you can see here, there's a couple of areas that have kind of come through not quite correct. This should be fine for the intent of our exercise. However, that can cause issues that we might be able to show you in a little bit. So to start off with, I'll just show you how to register the normals if you don't have those. And we'll compare and contrast the normals that we brought in through our PTX that have been generated by the scanner and the normals that are generated within Cloud Compare. So you, to this you go Tools, Normals, Compute. So we're just going to duplicate the scan first just so we can compare these um, and turn off this initial scan so then we go to So we just go Edit normals compute. So there's three ways to compute normals you can see from this menu. It's through plane, height function and triangulation. Now generally speaking for buildings we do it via a height function. That's just um, because it's quite good at capturing sharp edges and a lot of the maths work out quite quite well. Planar can work still reasonably well but it's not quite so good with the sharper corners. And triangulation is really great for curved objects um, or elements with large numbers of curves. But just for the moment, we'll just use our height function here. Uh, so just using this height function, we're going to look at using our Z plane for our preferred orientation. This just tends to work the best for large scale scans. The next thing we're going to look at is our, our radius here. Now, the default is generally pretty good, though you can change it if you want. It's just talking about the amount of area it uses to capture the surrounding points to help it work out the normal. So for reasonably dense point clouds like our own or point clouds with decent fidelity, it's, it's, it's quite good. But say you've got quite a, a low fidelity point cloud, you might want to expand that out to just to capture as many points in order to work out that plane for that normal. So I'm feeling pretty good about all this and we'll just press OK and then now it should start processing. Okay. 
So now that's done, we'll just take that back to a scalar field. Um, so that again is edit, normals, convert to scalar field. We'll just change it down there, so make sure we've got the right um, scalar field selected for a visualization. And there you go. Um, as you can see there, that's much more kind of consistent and planar. And it's looking quite good. So what we're going to do is now um, compare the two scans um, through a mesh and see how well they mesh. So if you look up at this item here on the toolbar, this is our POSIN mesh button. This is a plugin for Cloud Compare, but this is how most meshes for point clouds are handled. It's also available in the plugins menu. As we can see here, we've got a various submenu items. So we want to set an op tree depth of an approximately um, 11. And we can look at our samples per node. We've got a quite a good point cloud. Um, so we can leave that all pretty much how it is. And last thing, we just want to um, output our density as a scalar field. This will enable us to use our scalar field functions to cut out all the extraneous data that this meshing exercise will generate, as you'll see in a moment. So we also get this option to import our cloud colors. Um, so we'll just select OK, since this is a colored point cloud. Um, if not, that would be fine just to go no. OK, as you can see, that's come through. We'll just turn off our point cloud here um, and just try and highlight our mesh out. So we'll turn on our lighting here, so that's just display, turn on sunlight, which will give us another look at it. Just have a look at our scalar field now. And we'll just start using the scalar field to cut out some of these low density points. And here we go, this starts to give us a better idea of how it's looking. So we'll switch that back over to our RGB. And that's not come through amazingly well, unfortunately. You see we've got a lot of um, almost bubbling and where the normals have played with. So now we're just going to try our other mesh settings. So it's a similar process, just using pressing that um, posse and mesh button. It's all the same settings, and we'll just press OK. OK, so now that's come through, and that's looking quite nice. So what we're going to do is just call out our additional data via density. And you can see how quickly, see quite quickly how useful that is that uh, really enables us to cut out all this extragenerous data that the meshing process creates. Um, so to actually cut that out, we go to Use this by edit scalar fields, 
filter by value. And that brings in our points that we've registered on through that graph there automatically. So that will cut out all that data automatically for us, which will enable us to reduce that down a lot. You see here, that's all come through quite nicely. We've got a new uh, graph there with new densities, and that means we've kind of cut all that additional data out for us. So this is as far as we can go in Cloud Compare. Our next step is in through to um, MeshLab, and we'll, we'll repeat a lot of this process using the MeshLab processes. But as you can see here, it's come through very, very nicely, and that's quite a successful mesh. So we're just going to save this as a POY and just call it tutorial. Great court. And just save it as a binary format. And there we go. All right, we'll load up MeshHub now.